the Runnemy Board of Education meeting is called to order. The Board of Education is compliance with Chapter 231 of the Public Laws of 1975 entitled the Open Public Meetings Act. The time, date, and location of this meeting was appropriately advertised by notifying the retrospect as well as posting notices in the Federal Hall, Runnemy Post Office, Run Mary Bolt School, Align Bank School, Grace Downey School, and the Runnemy Public School District website. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call board members. <coughs> Patricia Adair. Here. Angel is in absence. Charles Buckheim. Present. Naomi Davidson. Present. Maria Pizzarelli is absent. Patricia Smith is absent. Samantha Spaulding. Here. Lynn Terrell here. John Wilson. Here. Six present, three absent. Right. Also present, Mark Iannucci, Superintendent, Joanne Augustine, Business Administrator, Earl Vasallo, Interim Business Administrator, Jane Yezzi, Principal Bingham Downing School, Steve Healy, Principal Mary Bolt School, James Winklespeck, Vice Principal Mary Bolt School, Lori Hines, Child Study Team Supervisor, Butch, and Dr. Sean McCarran, curriculum supervisor. At this time, I need to have an approval of minutes from September 9th and September 25th. I'll make that motion. Motion made by Chas. Second. Seconded by Naomi. Roll call. And when you're done voting, could you please pass the executive session minutes back to uh, Joanne? Patricia Dare. Dipsy. Charles Buckheim. Yes. Naomi Davidson. Yes. Smith Spaulding. Yes. Lynn Brillo. Yes. John Moore. Yes. Motion carries. I also need a motion to um, approve the financial report. I'd like to make a motion to approve the financial report. I'll second. Motion made by Naomi, seconded by Lynn. Roll call. Patricia Dare? Yes. Charles Buckheim? Yes. Naomi Davidson? Yes. Mm -hmm. Samantha Spaulding? Yes. Lynn Tarillo? Yes. John Ward? Yes. Motion carries. There are no presentations at this time. However, I just want to uh, publicly extend our sincere gratitude again to Dr. McCarran for his presentation yesterday morning and evening for the MAP scores. Um, again, thank you for your time and, and, and dedication. It was uh, wonderful. Um, correspondence, there is none, correct? Uh, at this time, we're open for public comments on agenda items only. The public is reminded that they should attempt to resolve problems and or complaints through initial contact with the staff member or members involved therein and the chief school administrator prior to petitioning the Board of Education. Complaints should only be brought to the board after the appropriate school staff has had a reasonable opportunity to resolve the problem at the employee level. Statements should be limited to topics to be addressed on the published agenda and limited in length to three minutes. At this time, is there any public comment on agenda items only? No. The secretary's report is attached. Joanne, do you have anything to add? Um, the only thing I was going to add is uh, I also did <coughs> one reimbursement on the uh, list of items there. And finally today, the IDEA has opened up in order to do reimbursement, so I'll be doing that as well on the first reimbursements on that too. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Sure. Uh, I saw that you had um, did a review of homeless documentation for our district. Do yeah. um, we have to have any children here in the district? Um, yeah, in fact, I just did um, tuition contracts to uh, two districts for four children, two apiece. And I sent them out on Friday. And then we also have several that are actually homeless from Runnymede but still staying within our um, district. Okay. So the ones I sent tuition contracts out are ones that are coming in homeless to us. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions for Joanne? Ms. Farinucci. 
Thank you. Um, just a couple things highlighting the principal's report. Student enrollment, 854 students, including his 11 average district placements. placements. Since we last met, a couple of district events that went on. We did have a nice honor society turnout last week. We have 40 students in seventh and eighth grade, which is the most, I think, since I've been here uh, that I can remember. Uh, the students are required to do various activities throughout the school year to maintain that honor society status. Recognizing grad eighth grade we recognize the graduation as well for that. Um, one of the things we talked about earlier was the safety patrols, just let the public know. Uh, under the AAA school safety patrollers, I think they call it, um, we initiated that program at all three schools. At Bingham and Downing, it began with third grade students. They're assisting with a couple different aspects of getting the little ones into the buildings and exiting the buildings and keeping them safe. At Bolts, I believe we started with eighth grade students here in this building. Uh, they're assisting again with entrance and dismissals and things like that. And they're posted basically posted with the adults so far on the school property in the vicinity. Um, they're not like four blocks up or anything like that. I know some districts do that. We're going to see how this goes first. I know when I drive to Del Mar, a lot they have the kids posted on the bike. Yeah, I'm not sure if we're, if we're there yet, but the kids are excited about it. Um, the turnout for the eighth grade, I think. We have 38 kids from eighth grade. Just made grade. So we actually we didn't know what kind of section we were going to get from the student population. Um, so we didn't know who to open it up to, whether it should be seventh and eighth. So uh, they put up the viewers and you know, uh, Mr. Calfair is kind of the um, advisor and uh, reached out informally. And we called it from behind. And at the end of the day, we had 38 people at the meeting. That's awesome. That's it's awesome. neat because it's a tough age to be a safety. So, yeah. Sure, we feel careful on how we, you know, assign them. Uh, you know, it's just another set of ears and eyes more than you know, a police officer because we want to <coughs> maintain that, you know, um, the, the way that people think about them as a, you know, a person of safety, not as a person who can get into trouble. You know, but it's careful balancing. Mrs. Jazzy, who's in charge of uh, Bingham? That was a question we had earlier. Uh, Bingham, it's Mr. Michelle and Ms. Bergman. Okay. And there's just one in charge at Downing? No, um, Ms. Tarashi and Ms. Herculus. Okay. So two at each school. Okay. And it, okay. I was just going to say, it just, it's been fabulous. It was just so easy to kind of, AAA was excellent to deal with. It was done in a flash. Um, so many students want to participate. I think we had about 25 at each school, just third graders. It's like half a third grade. <laughs> 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 the same thing on it. It's adorable. But at uh, Downing, they little, they're carrying around little notebooks, and I mean, it's just hilarious. I mean, I had them do the pledge, and uh, you know, they're so excited. We so said we do hot chocolate right before the holiday season, so that's in Diary of a Wimpy Kid, and they can relate to that. And it just really is, and it's just great to see them, you know, take a leadership role in their schools, and you know, it makes, you know, makes everybody feel real proud about what we're doing. That's great. And it both just, I just like to recognize um, Miss San Filippo. Um, Mr. John and Mr. Lockenshaw are also kind of advisory because he's taking the lead, but just, you know, a couple more adults for safety to go to, including us, of course, um, so there's always someone around. Just to reiterate also, when you're talking about the possibility of expansion outside the building, one of the reasons back way back when <laughs> uh, that safeties were pulled off the corners was because there were no adults within view of them, and they're standing on these corners by themselves, you know, across the kids or whatever, we were, we as parents were very concerned that our children were get set up there in the corner. Okay. So that's so one of the reasons that, yeah, so I mean, you know, if it's a buddy system, that might work. If, if it's within the view of a crossing guard, yeah, that's great. But that's just for the future. I also told Mr. Iucci that we were awarded with like trips to Baltimore Aquarium when I was an advisor. What we will be reaching out to you. If I need, if I, if I, if I, if you have a chaperone, let me know. I haven't been back since. <laughs> One of the discussions we had with the building principals was not to dangle that character mm -hmm. trip in front of you, but to see what the response was. Yeah, yeah, you know, no, absolutely. You know, sometimes absolutely. that's what you know entices the kid eventually. But yeah, we want to do special things for them. But since this is just a beginning effort. Right. Uh, well, what do you think, uh, Mr. Trump. Hilly, was the reason that you got such a wonderful turnout? Well, I think, first of all, I think we, we got fortunate with a, um, you know, a group of eighth graders. Okay. Um, That's a good 
skills, some leadership skills, and it all starts with you know the honor society. Um, it's an immediate way for them to get the community service hours. Okay. Um, and um, you know, uh, other than that, I mean, it's just okay. That's great. Yeah, just a, just a good group of kids, and I yeah. honestly, I, I'm excited because if they start off strong, then the seventh graders will look forward right. to it mm -hmm. next year, and hopefully it'll be uh, you know. Also, I want to thank the counselors of all three schools for the week of respect that was held last week on a lot of activities for the plan. <coughs> it takes a lot. A lot goes into that. They started basically when they came back in September um, to plan those different things and carry out those activities. Uh, I believe red, I never say this correctly, red <laughs> ribbon week takes <laughs> next week. So if you see these children dressed in very odd outfits, um, all appropriately, for each day. We're ready to work. So if they, if they come home with spray paint hair or something, um, we're ready for activities. Uh, I also I put in a um, report that we'd like to public and one of the things we talked about in our not only district board is, um, is recognizing some of these student groups at future meetings. Um, so I think in November we'd like to recognize maybe some of the kids from evaluation system got underway. October was the start of the month. Um, everybody's under, underway, I guess, with their observations. It's a little bit new task for the ones that are new to the system. Dr. McCarran is familiar, a little more familiar than the rest of the administrators because he's used it in the past. Um, he's been a great asset to us, helping us through the rough spots. A couple technology glitches with you know, laptop computers and all those fun things, but we seem to have those resolved. So we're Moving along, we want to have them all finished by March 31st, which is a realistic goal, I think. Frank. Uh, professional development, we had another session for the Teacher Academy today, actually. Um, so that's two we've had so far. And it turned out to be, you know, it's, it's been good. The teachers are excited about it. Uh, all the administrators are there discussing different things. Today's was parent, parent involvement, so we have parents, we have conference covers, stuff like that. Um, just reviewing the basics of the district. Maybe people are, even if they're new teachers to this district, they come from experience from other places, they can bring some of the experiences to add what we already have going on here, so we're excited about that. Um, we also met with the mentees, and then we also conduct you know, as far as state mandates, you have to have a new procedure in place for that, so we're also trained um, in district as well as some other things going on. As far as myself, last week I attended the superintendent academy, but on my own, up there in Trenton. Um, it's a group of about 46 new superintendents to the state, so I'll be attending those once a month. And that's a good way to connect with some people who are having some of the same questions that I have. Um, run by basically uh, NJASA, a lot of former superintendents, a lot of people in that organization. I continue to support the Rotary Clubs of Runnymede, Belmont, Glendora. They're doing some great things in town. They just sponsored a lot of my school board mm -hmm. all stage. So we've got dedication ceremonies coming up. This season, I'm not mm -hmm. sure when it is. So that's, a, that's a good organization to be a part of. So it's something I look forward to going to when I can make the meetings. They meet each Wednesday, but sometimes I can't get there. Um, also, we've been speaking with Black Horse Plate, Belmont Foster Township, just in ways we can improve our collaboration. Um, since we are senators from the high school, we need to beef up the articulation there. There's been a lot of turnover in all three districts in the last couple of years, so we're losing some of these administrators in there in the past, so we're looking to beef that up a little bit. And we can share resources. So if they're doing something professional development-wise that they can invite us to, or vice versa, or just think it's normal, so that's great. And I also shared that memo with Marty. Uh, I also like to thank Mr. Irv Salo. He started with us this week. He's been working with Joanne and uh, myself to make this transition smooth. Depth and wealth of knowledge that uh, Excited to have. He's helping us out a great deal in a couple days. So we'll be seeing a lot of Mr. Vassallo in the months to come. So, that is wonderful. Question? Yeah. Yes. Do they still have the Kingdom County Circuit Pass right? Yes, they do. We'll you, be attending, attending that those as well. As well. Yes. 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 Any other questions for Mr. Iannucci? All right. Thank you.
you want to welcome. Thank you. <clears throat> principal's report. There was a few questions on the principal's report now that they're here. Yes. Um, uh, just, Ms. Yes, I just want to thank you for your email and your promise in trying to resolve the situation with the school day duties. It's alleviated somewhat, but I'm still uncomfortable. Um, I know I shared, Sam shared with me that there's a permission slip that has to be signed by a parent giving permission to a sibling to pick up a child after school. Do you have any idea how many children are being picked up by siblings at each of the elementary schools? I don't, but I can find okay. them. Okay. We have a form of forever student. Yes, I know that. And if, if you could um, reiterate that point again. Um, I'm still very concerned. It's still a safety issue. Um, I've seen children sliding down the railings of Downing School. These They're, are both students. These are both students waiting for their sits to be picked up. Um, I don't I don't know how it can be addressed between we kind of brainstormed a little bit. Samantha had suggested maybe the police can make, you know, around around each of the elementary schools and just remind these folks children that they're not supposed they're not there to play. They're they're there to wait for their siblings and if that continues, they're gonna lose that privilege. Ms. Yeah, the, uh, myself and We're just going to have to, often when I say wait, Mr. Wink and I, who Jay's at two schools, we'll have to get up there and just start taking out names. Okay. Call parents and say, look, right. if, if they can't, understand. it's a privilege, right. not not, exactly. you know, not something that, you know, is a must. So if you can't do it, we're going to start yes, asking them to vacate the property until they're right. I appreciate that. I'm so. just, I'm very, very concerned. We'd like to give them the benefit of the doubt just because, you know, you, you, you need, sometimes you remove a kid from one property, then it becomes a problem in another property mm -hmm. that they got to hang somewhere. but. Right. It's also affecting instruction at the end of the day in elementary buildings too, because the kids are hanging around. It's not wasn't so bad when the air conditioner in the units are not working <coughs> on in the rooms, but when the windows are open and the kids are pulled around, it's you know, it's also disturbing instruction. So that upsets me as well. It's a big gap of time between the boys' dismissal and the elementary school's dismissals. I I mean we talked a little bit about I know it's a bus schedule situation, but we're, we're, again, we're discussing the safety and the education of the children in this town, and I just want to make sure that we do everything we can from both sides of the fence here right. to rectify the situation. I appreciate that. Thanks. Not a problem. Any other questions on the principal's report? <clears throat> oh, I have one more, just one more Good for Mr. Keeley. I'm very interested to hear about your results of your phase one, your character ed. When I'm reading, you know your your uh, report here as far as how you're going to get into this character ed. And, and I'll, uh, I'll I'll defer a lot of the credit to uh, Mr. Wink on this because okay. uh, he he's got some experience from his last district. And one of the things that I think we both decided was the timeline that you see there is important. You know, uh -huh. There's a lot of new things coming on teachers this year, and we want to make sure that uh, we're not just doing something to do. We want to make sure the first thing we do is evaluate what we have in place, Good. and probably just need to formalize some of those things. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, uh, Mr. Wink just sent out an email today for, for formulating a character education committee involving uh, staff members. And um, we're going to hopefully meet a couple times uh, you know, before, before the holidays and then of course in, in the spring and just talk about what are some feasible things that we can do in the district, what are some things that are already being done that we wouldn't know about. They do it at, you know, in fourth grade that sometimes doesn't get back to us. And um, we want to make sure it's something that while we agree with the board that maybe it's something that we need to either, either just inform you more about or beef up a little bit, we want to make sure we have teacher buy in because we don't want to overwhelm them. Um, but, you know, like Mark said about respect, there's a lot of, there's a lot of neat stuff already going on here. Um, Mr. Wink took um, a couple of our key players when it comes to uh, getting students involved in assemblies back in his old district last week um, to see a, what do they call it? Men to win, 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 win it assembly. It's kind of something. Um, that I fully don't understand, but relatively easy to put together. <laughs> I didn't get to go, because you got to go. But um, it's just like something, a reward, something to celebrate some character education. Um, I put in there, Mrs. Beta's doing the kindness box, where um, kids put in slips for random acts of kindness, and Mrs. Beta gets them a little reward. Um, but we definitely want to look at the uh, big picture, and then you know put together something that's going to you know, work this year.
yeah. years to come. That's great. Uh, I commend so, well, you for your efforts here. It's good to see that it's coming back to the fruition. And of course, the safety patrol is, a, is another, yes. another piece of that. Yeah, sure. You know what I mean? Having just you know, uh, good role models for kids to look up to. I am talking with Jim and Steve too. They've been reaching out to other districts to do some other um, programs. Mm -hmm. We're trying to keep the cost right now to a limited cost of uh, cost of the district. It wasn't as the budget for, so that's something. You know, some, some of those programs do get a little um, expensive, and they won't give you a quote until you're ready to sign your name on a dotted line. But, uh, <laughs> so we're trying to do it with holding the cost down for the district. And things you can do. A lot of things for the county can be donated. Incentives just do a dance, or you know, and that's some of the things they do first in line Fridays and stuff like that. The kids, if they reach that goal, they get to go up first for lunch and stuff. And little things like that. I don't care how old the kids are, mm -hmm. you know, each part of the high school. Level. First in line Friday would really work. I'm going to bring that back tonight. Yeah. 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 <laughs> 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 we commend them on looking into so they've done a nice job with that. Great, thanks. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Nurses, building and grounds report, and special education reports are also attached. Any questions there? Just a comment. Uh, I know Krista's here. I can see if you can just um, relay the message to mm -hmm. the other two nursing staff. This looks like an awesome Red River Week program. Yeah. Yeah. Thank yeah. you so much. It's so cool. a lot of planning going on to this, I can tell. So thanks. And it's a, it's a fun week as well. So yeah. we thank you for your time. And uh, while the spotlight's on you, do you want to have anything to tell us? This is more about the PTA. Actually, just a few things, but um, some really good things. We uh, just ended our coupon book sale, and we'd like to thank everyone for that support. The profit was around $5,000, which is fantastic. Uh, we have some great things planned, so that's a, a relief off my test after realizing, you know, not a household budget, but your PTA budget goes really fast, so thanks, Mrs. Wilson, for taking that burden on every other year. So I have a big sigh of relief for the, the people who really supported that. Uh, our book fair just ended, and we were able to do some great things with our scholastic dollars that you earn uh, as a profit of the book fair. We were able to give uh, $15 to each classroom teacher from grades K through 5 uh, to spend to supplement their classroom libraries. Um, we were able to reach out to the newly formed book clubs at Bingham and Downing, and we offered to purchase the books that they will need to operate their clubs in the future, so they'll get back to us when their um, planning is ready. And uh, we donated $100 to each library at the elementary level uh, to purchase library-bound books directly from Scholastic, the kind that the book fair books are a little bit more of a household use versus if you order them directly from Scholastic, they get the more firmly bound books uh, for a library. And then our big exciting thing is we were able to give $100 to each language arts teacher um, from grade 6, 7, and 8. Uh, which was uh, helpful. They were very excited. It's like a little shopping trip for them. Um, just to also support um, the language arts literacy programs here at our school that we know um, is a really big, important part. Uh, we are having our Katie Cox Cyber Safety. Uh, that's our big program for the fall. That's going to be next Thursday here at 6.30 in the library. Uh, Keith Dunn is the speaker, and he is an he's naturally known for cyber safety. He will also be providing the uh, assembly to the students during the day, and then there's a parent portion in the evening. In order to help increase our parent attendance, the PTA is also offering a bingo to provide uh, child care for anyone who comes to the meeting, their children can attend our bingo, uh, and then that way just alleviates a, a reason why they wouldn't be able to attend, and hopefully uh, we'll be getting a great response. We're sending out an uh, email blast through our constant contact for emails that we already have, plus a flyer out through the school. And Halloween is coming up, so we uh, will be reaching out to provide any kind of support to the schools. Uh, for Bingham and Downing, we'll be providing a little juice and snack um, for those kids. And then I'll be meeting with Mr. Peely to thank the boys. Thank you very much for the update. Uh, any, com any committee update at this time? No, you um, we meet next November 16th, November 16th, and I'll probably be getting the agenda on possible bills for the ones to look at. Okay. And, uh, I would present them to the members here prior to the vote. Okay, thank, thank you very much. much. <coughs> uh, Black Horse Pike, um, how about negotiations? Is there anything updated there? Yes, um, our negotiations team, we are planning on meeting on um, October 28th 
And this meeting, we are hoping to um, invite our new VA to um, sit with us and go over what we have um, agreed to already, show him the, our contract part portions that we've all agreed to so far. Mm -hmm. So we are still in um, talking mode, and we hope that we can soon be able to fairly get a contract for our staff and our, um, our, our staff and our teachers fairly. And we also, I believe, um, Angel is on that committee, Patty, John and I, so that's our meeting date is the 28th at 5 p.m. All right, thank you very much. <coughs> Any questions for Naomi? Um, I also attended the Camden County Fall meeting, and that was regarding the new teacher evaluation system. They had a slide projection show of just everything that Mr. Iannucci and our staff have given to us, but it was just a re reminder and a, um, a gathering to, to socialize and to um, network with other Camden County schools. So that was a very a good event. And then um, I also attended another one um, a few weeks ago beginning of September regarding special education and the services that the Lark School um, <coughs> has contracted with us and other schools. They just went over um, different portions of their curriculum that they have to offer out to school. So it was a very informative uh, night and the special education part of it was very um, interesting and they went over some new laws and um, what 501 plans are and um, just kind of uh, showed new board members the whole like the system of how from beginning to end how special education works and gives just gave us a round about way of um, knowing how to ask good questions about special education and, and things like that. So it was a good informative um, class that I took. Thank you very much. <coughs> At this time we will um, proceed with business on the property and transportation. I need a motion to approve items number one to three. I'd like to make a motion to approve items number one to three. The motion made by Naomi, seconded by John. Uh, questions? I actually have one. The preschool trips work together this year, so we'll have to pay two different days, but is that just one bus per? So we always pay for two buses, yeah. correct? So that's just one, one. Um, so it's still not an, an added cost, mm -hmm. correct? Because it's still we're still only paying for two buses. Any other questions? Roll call. Patricia Dare? Yes. Charles Buckheim? Yes. Amy Davidson? <coughs> yes. Samantha Spalding? Yes. Lynn Chirillo? Yes. John Ward? Yes. Motion carries. Under personnel, I need a motion to approve items number one through 13. For number 12, it should say extend FMLA for employee number two, four, five, that was a typo. <coughs> Motion made by Chad. Second. Seconded by Naomi. Any questions? Roll call. Patricia Dare? Yes. Charles Buckman? Yes. Davidson? Yes. Samantha Spolding? Yes. Ventura? Yes. John Moore? Yes. Motion passes. Number five, I need a motion to approve items number one. So ten. I'd like to make a motion to approve items number one through ten. Motion so made by Naomi, seconded by John. <coughs> Any questions? Roll call. Patricia Dare? Yes. Charles Buckheim? Yes. Naomi Davidson? Yes. Samantha Spolding? Yes. Lynn Torello? Yes. John Moore? Yes. Motion carries. <laughs> Under curriculum, I need a motion to approve items number one to three. I'd like to make a motion to approve items number one to three. Motion made by Second. Naomi, seconded by Patty. Any questions? Roll call. Patricia Mayer? Yes. Charles Buckheim? Yes. Naomi Davidson? Yes. Samantha Spalding? Yes. Lynn 
This time I need a motion to approve items number just number two under policy and public relations. Motion made by Chaz. Second. Seconded by Lynn. <coughs> Roll call. Patricia Adair? Yes. Charles Buckheim? Mm -hmm. Yes. Nancy Davidson? Yes. Nancy Spalding? Yes. Lynn Jolo? Yes. And John Moore? Yes. Motion carries. At this time, we are open for public comment on non-agenda items. <coughs> the public is reminded that they should attempt to resolve problems under complaints through initial contact with the staff member or members involved therein and the chief school administrator prior to petition and the Board of Education. Complaints should only be brought to the board after the appropriate staff member has a reasonable opportunity to resolve the problem at the employee level. Statements should be limited to length in three minutes. Public is reminded that all public complaints against a district employee must be made through a specific grievance <coughs> process. A description of this process may be found in Board of Ed Policy <coughs> 50167. This policy is available upon request in the Office of the Board Secretary. Any individual named an employee in a complaint before the Board of Education without the employee's permission should be cite, could be cited for violating that employee's civil and contractual rights. This time, is there any public comment? No? Okay, I need a motion to go into executive session. Motion made by Chas, second, second by Patty. Whereas while the Senator Byer and Bayer Open Public Meetings Act requires all meetings of the Runaway School District Board of Education to be held in public, NJSA 10 4 12 b sets forth nine types of matters that may lawfully be discussed in executive session without the public being permitted, and whereas the Runaway Public School District Board of Education has deemed it necessary to go into closed session to discuss certain matters which are exempted from the public, and whereas the nine exceptions to public meetings set forth in NJSA 10 4 12 b are listed below, and next to each exception is a box within which the number of issues to be privately discussed that fall within that exemption shall be written. And after each exemption is a space for additional information that will disclose as much information about the decision as possible without undermining the purpose of exemption shall be written. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Marone Public School District Board of Education will go into closed session for the following reason, as outlined in NJSA 10.4-12b. Any matter involving the employment, appointment, termination of employment, terms and conditions of employment, evaluation of the performance, promotion or discipline of any specific prospective public officer or employee or current public officer or employee employed by or appointed by the public body unless all individual employees or appointees whose rights could be adversely affected request in writing that such matter or matters be discussed at a public meeting. More specifically, we will be speaking about business office positions. <coughs> Whereas the length of executive session is under, undetermined, however, the Rumney Public School District Board of Education will make every attempt to estimate the time of the session prior to convening the session, after which a public meeting shall be convened at 8.05 p.m. <coughs> and the Rumney Public School District Board of Education will proceed with business. Now, therefore, be resolved <coughs> that the Rumney Public School District Board of Education will go into executive session for only the above stated reasons. Be it further resolved that the Romney Public School District Board of Education hereby declares that its discussion of aforementioned subjects may be made public at a time when the Romney Public School District Board of Education attorney advises that the disclosure of the discussion will not detrimentally affect any right, interest, or duty of the school district or any other entity with respect to said discussion. Be it further resolved that the Romney Public School District Board of Education for the aforementioned reason hereby declares that the public is excluded from the portion of the meeting during which the above discussion shall take place and hereby directs the board secretary to take the appropriate action to effectuate the terms of this resolution. Be it further resolved that the board secretary on the next business day following this meeting shall furnish a copy of this resolution to any member of the public who requests one at fees allowed by NJSA 47 1A-1. Action on any item may or may not take place in open session at the conclusion of the executive session. All in favor of executive session? Aye. Aye, seven. This time we are in executive session. However, before we go and the public meets, I just want to make a public announcement that we have changed our board meeting for next month to uh, we will not have a work session. It will still be November 20th, but our meeting will start at 5 p.m. Our meeting will start at 5 p.m. so members of our community could then make it over to the uh, zoning and planning meeting that starts at 7 p.m. in which they're going to discuss the building of 114 townhomes.
So with that being said, we decided to move our meeting to 5 p.m.